Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be starting a series on uh, some more in-depth uh, customization of your development machine, where you do all of your web development and web design work. And the first thing we're going to do is actually set up a local server, a web server on your computer. And this will give you a lot of benefits. Uh, when you move on to using something like PHP and MySQL, you're going to need this to do local development. But it's also very helpful for um, even HTML, CSS, and JavaScript development as well. And when we get a little further down this path and we want to use uh, the live reload application, it requires this as well. So the first thing I want you to do, do a Google search for this ZAMP. There are several different flavors of this. There's um, some that are specific for Windows, some that are specific are for Mac. I chose this because it's cross-platform and that way we can download one thing no matter what we're using and it works. And the, uh, the AMP you can see stands for Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. They don't always come with Perl. I use MAMP on my um, Mac which is just Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP, so it doesn't come with the Perl. This one comes with the Perl. We're not using any Perl scripts for this uh, course, but what I want you to do, go ahead and download the correct um, version for your operating system. It should start momentarily, and if not, all we need to do, there it goes. I had to open it up from SourceForge. It's a pretty big file. Um, currently it's over 100 megs, so you might want to either download on campus or just be careful because um, that is going to count against your bandwidth. Okay, got my uh, ZAMP downloaded. Let's go ahead and open the executable. Tell it, of course. As long as you got it from the Apache Friends website, you should know that it's safe. Uh, it tells me that it seems like I've got some antivirus running. That's kind of funny since I don't have antivirus installed on this, but just tell it, okay because of activated UAC. So this is Windows specific and it's going to depend on what your current security settings are. You just get through those and we're just going to next through some of this. So we can tell it what we want, what we don't want. And uh, this is what's actually kind of nice. So for the stuff I'm going to do, I actually don't need FileZilla. I don't need Mercury Mail. I don't need Tomcat. Uh, I don't need Perl. I do want to keep PHP my admin, especially if you're in uh, the ITD 210 course. It's an extremely helpful tool for um, MySQL and PHP troubleshooting. We don't need Webalizer or this. So, I mean, we can customize this. You can leave it to the defaults. It just installs extra stuff. If you don't use it, it doesn't really matter. Tell it next, where do you want to install it? And this is fine. Uh, this is just going to be where it puts your local server. I recommend you don't put it deep like in your My Documents or something. You want to kind of put it right under that C drive just to make it easier to get to. And uh, we don't need to learn about Bitnami today, but Bitnami is, is also pretty cool. Something worth exploring on your own. So we just next through this and we work our way through the install. Okay, my XAMPP uh, install wizard just finished. It asks me if I want to start the control panel. I'm going to leave that checked yes, uh, because the control panel is where all the XAMPP magic happens. Now, depending on what version of Windows you're using, you can always get back to this through your list of applications. Uh, by uh, going under XAMPP X, and that control panel is what we want. It's already up and running. The XAMPP control panel is very powerful. It allows us to configure and manage a lot of the tools, well, all of the tools that come with XAMPP. Uh, the main uh, the ones that we're concerned with for these courses are going to be Apache and MySQL. As uh, you saw previously, I didn't even install FileZilla, Mercury, or Tomcat. That's why they don't give me the options to start them. But to get started using XAMPP, we're just going to hit Start under Apache, Start under MySQL, and you can see that they turn green. And each time you start one of these for the first time, Windows is going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? And you always want to make sure that you tell it, uh, yes, private networks and public networks allow access. That ensures that whether you're at home or you're at Starbucks or you go to the bring your laptop to the college, uh, you will work properly. We should see that it uh, tells us that we're, our status is running. And we can click admin to bring up the XAMPP. Um, administrative inter interface. 
Now, if you haven't selected English yet, go ahead and click English. Your screen might look a little different than mine, but that'll bring you here. And essentially, if we get to this point and it says localhost slash XAMPP, that lets us know that we're up and running. I, I want to kind of distinguish this from what we're typically used to doing, right? We might be working on an HTML or a CSS file and we open that in our web browser and the URL looks like this. It's file colon slash 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 and then that path of where it lives on our hard drive. Well, that works fine for basic HTML and CSS, but as we get into more advanced development or we want to use more advanced tools like the live reload application that I'm going to talk about in another video, we need to be running a server on our computer. And that's what XAMPP does for us. It is running an actual web server, an Apache web server on our computer. Uh, it's not tied to a .com or anything, but it's like a make-believe, you know, yourname.com running on your computer. Nobody by default has access from the outside to get into it, but while you're developing, you have access uh, to work on it. So that's the install process of XAMPP. My next video, I'm going to uh, walk through some of the settings in order to get ourselves up and running.